Well, we're going to talk, amen. We're going to talk about being part for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll pray. Father God, we just thank you and honor you this day for your word, Father. It, it, it's your seeds, Father God. Hallelujah. It's your water, Lord, that even makes fertile the seeds so it can grow in our life, Father God. It's the bread, Father God, where we can partake and eat and have nourishment, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you. It's the milk whereby we can grow, Lord, yes. in the name of Jesus. We thank you and bless you, Father. It's the meat that we can labor for, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. That word that's just been well done, Father God. Hallelujah. That's been residing, Father God, that's settled in heaven, hallelujah, the, your sure foundation, the word that changes not, Father, and we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, as we give the word today, you just increase, you encourage, Father God, you build up, Lord, you, you show us, Father God, the things that we need to see. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us. We thank you for giving us understanding and guiding us into all truth. We always give you the glory, honor, and praise, Father, thank for whatever you. gifts and manifestation of your Holy Spirit, Father. And we bless you and thank you for your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> If we go to the book of John, chapter 4, and verse 34, hallelujah, I want to read from the NLT. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jewel. I was just there. All right. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I don't know about you. I, I, I'm just excited. I, I, I got something in me. It's like excitement about something that's about to happen. I don't know, God, you know, I don't care what things look like. Something's about to break forth. Amen? Amen. Something's about to happen. If God can do, he said in Isaiah 66, ah, here we are again. If he said in Isaiah 66, he said, who has heard of such a thing that a nation can be brought forth in one day? I'm telling you, God, God's going to do things. Oh, I forgot for her even to say what she, she wanted to say about what we we're talking about. Sorry. No, be glad. It's go ahead. But I, I'll say with the speedily things, this is going in because we're, we're getting in the message. Watch this. He said, who has heard such a thing? You know where that scripture, Isaiah 66? Yes. It says right here that who has heard of such a thing that a nation can be brought forth in one day. It's probably verse 8, I think, I believe. So I'll look at that. Look at that. Verse 8. Thank you, Lord. I, it just, thank you, Holy Spirit. So he said, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth children. Amen. See, travailing sometimes takes time. That's right. I remember we were in the hospital. They kept thinking, oh, she's about to get forth. And I'm running to the hospital. He's like, get ready. I was like, okay, you sure about this? And then you hear it so many times, you're just like, nah, it, it's not even going to happen today. And then uh, it happened. That was like four in the morning. I don't know. It was like three in the morning. They were like, yeah, you better get ready. I was like, we time. I don't think it is. And it was the day I actually fed her. I told her, don't be eating that stuff. She said, I'm craving like chili and fries. I was like, come on. Man. I said, you know how it is. And she ate it. I used to throw up the whole time. Yeah, I was one crazy. bearing the labor yeah. barons here. She wasn't. I was carrying her burden. It says, yeah. he that's strong in the faith, the oh. what? No, no. Tell us about the bear the infirmities of the weak. 
I was the one pregnant, man. I should have been good. <laughs> she would eat and I'd be throwing up, yeah, man. Yeah, but you be the one craving stuff. Oh, like, I was like, but I'm saying there's in a point. Yeah, it was it. Now that I think about it, yeah, I was the one throwing up and Maybe everything. But the day exactly she had to give birth, that's when she threw up. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, this ain't me today. So it had, it happened, and then that night she was she was gone. But it took time. But this is saying, have you heard it in one day? I'll tell you this. I'm going to share this, and then I'll let her share. I was praying with a brother this week. Brother called, and then he just said, let's pray about something. So we prayed, and I'll let him share one day. He's not in the state. But he, we prayed, and this is at night. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about this is early work time and all this. This is at night, and we're praying, and we were like, send it forth speedily. Now, angels, go now. When we were finishing praying, he said, brother, this is crazy. He said, I just got text from the business. This is like 8 o'clock at night. Who's up? 7.30 it was. He said, I just got a text from them right now. <clears throat> he said, hold on, let me call you back. I'm going to call them. He called them. And uh, what's it called? He was like, um, brother. He said, they'll call me back. You know, the, their system. And at 9 o'clock, they called them. The same day. And said, we're, we're working on it to get the thing fixed right now. I was like, we, it'd be, the word says, before you call, I'll answer. And that's Isaiah 65. And while you're yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. Isaiah 12, Isaiah Go ahead. 16. I want her to share because she just shared last night with me the same thing. I didn't know. But she said the same thing. If you want me to say it or you want to okay. say it. I could say it. Huh? Okay, go ahead. No, she was praying with another person. They have a truck, right? Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they have trucks. That's trucks, the, driving they trucks. Have truck. It was out of commission truck. for... No, it's, it's, it wasn't working. working. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, you can, and then, well, because well, this is relating to what oh, we're doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, I just want to testify of something that happened a um, few days ago that we know. I just want to say this to encourage us all. You know, I was praying for someone on the phone. They said, you know, Pastor, you know, my truck, it broke down. So I'm using my friend's truck. I said, you're using your friend's truck? He said, yeah, it's been broke down for months and I'm losing money. You know, those trucks that they go from one state to another. Semi truck. You know, <clears throat> they own that business. So I'm like, ah, okay, we need to pray about this. Because they were calling for something to pray about something else, about the dream, to interpret the dream. So I was interpreting the dream. So I said, listen, I have to pray for that truck because that's a, that's a thief. Uh, that's a thieving spirit. We need to take authority over that. That if you see your finances are going down in trouble at work, you must know it's a thieving spirit. Your business, when the enemy is coming to attack your business, it's a thieving spirit. So we have to pray about that. So we, um, so I prayed with him right there that night. And as I prayed with him right night, he calls me in the morning. Says, "Oh, they just called me that my truck is ready." For Monday, it's been broken down for months and they couldn't find the parts. Now they're telling the truck is ready, it's fixed. He says, I was running, you know, running out of money. The finances were going because it's a big truck. You know, these big truck, they cost a lot. And, and to repair them and it's like, oh, the money was, I said, that's a thieving spirit. We need to take authority over that. And boom, God just showed up. And the trucks, the trucks is now working. And then I prayed for the lady. The son, they said they were running in school years ago. And he hit his friend. They were fighting with a friend in school. And he hit, the friend hit him. And then he hit on the, you know, on the cement, like in school, the balcony hit the head, and so he was bleeding inside the head, concussion. you know, a concussion, so he was bleeding, and so he had an infection in the blood. I said, listen, God is able, says he gets confused, 
as I mean, uh, uh, is it 16 year old or 12 year? I don't know how old he is, but he's a little, you know, a child. And he says that she says, well, he gets confused, like he is like in people with old timers, like he won't know where he is or what's going on. And he's seeing demons everywhere and all that. I said, listen, we need to pray about this. The devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. So we prayed on the phone. He said, you know, she said, what, you know what? You prayed for my eyes because I couldn't see. Now I can read the word I see now. I can read. You know, because I remember I was telling him it was something in the family because all of them, it was like a veil in the face they couldn't see. You know, when we prayed for each one of them, they got delivered and they were set free. And all of them, they can see now. It's completely like removed. But that boy, God delivered that boy and set that boy free. And the boy, he woke up in the morning for the first time in his life. He couldn't sleep. Remember, he would just not sleep at all. He says, for the first time in my life, I slept and I'm peaceful and I'm thinking and I'm normal. I feel normal. Like something says, I don't, I'm not confused. I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing, you know, I know where I am and I'm not confused and I'm, I'm not seeing the demons and all that. And God set the boy free, Amen. you know. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. No, God's doing things, and we're going to see it. I'm just, I'm just saying things are going to happen. Health, he said in Isaiah 55, 58, your health shall come forth speedily. Right. Things are going rapid. Technology, they're trying to produce to catch up with God. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to make medicine fast so people are cured fast. Man, they're not going to beat God on this. I'm telling you right now. God's going to be doing things we haven't even yet seen. You're going to see people fractured that are going to be made whole. Right. You're going to see people that are deformed just come unformed to be reformed. Amen? To do what God made them to be. Amen? We're going to see a lot of things taking place. Amen? And I'm saying he's going to use all the people of God. Amen. It isn't going to be like one person here or one there. He's going to be using people. Praise God. Let's go here to John chapter 4, verse 34. I'm going to read here from the NLT. He said, Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God, who sent me, and from finishing what? His work. You know the saying, Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up. See, he's talking to the people right now, the church, to wake up. Amen? He tells us to wake up for the and look around. Amen? For the fields, I'm telling you this, the fields are the business places, the work places, amen? The, the places that you go, praise God, that's the fields, amen? It could be the places no one reached in the name of Jesus. The fields are already ripe for harvest. They're there. Sometimes we go in a place and you think, hey, I don't know, man so dark these people ain't saved listen you need to wake up and look around because it doesn't matter what it looks like the person is on the outside the people are ready for harvest now amen the harvest is truly plent i'm saying the harvest is plentiful right now he's the lord of the harvest if we just share about jesus Bring the Jesus to them. Amen? Amen. We're the hands, we're the feet, we're the mouths. Amen? Amen. The only ones they're going to see is where he planted us because the fields are already ready and ripe for harvest. And what did he say? The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is what? People. Amen? Some people think it's just things. He's talking about people, amen, are brought to eternal life. 
So when you're talking about paying good wages, God has an account in heaven for you. Amen? If one sinner comes to the Lord, all heaven rejoices. That's what the word says. And the people are brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both who? The planter and the harvest alike. Is that where I want to keep going? You know the saying, one plants, another harvests, and it's true. I send you to harvest where you did not plant. Amen? Others already done the work. They were already there setting it up, getting them prepared. You don't know. You, they could have been sowing seeds before you got there. They could have been sowing seeds to your friends, but you're there to now reap the harvest. Amen? It's like when the angel comes back, he's going to put the sickle in. Amen? He, he's, not, he, he's reaping the harvest, but that harvest he's putting in isn't for the righteous. In Revelation, he's putting the sickle on there to get rid of the wicked. But there's a sickle coming where we have that it's going to go and gather the people. Amen? For this end time harvest that's coming on. I believe it's coming now. The people, they watching all this stuff going on. They're afraid. Well, who doesn't give us the spirit of fear? God. He, his perfect love casts out that fear. They'll be looking at us like, how come, man, you ain't worried about everything going on with the COVID, the Delta, and all this? No, -uh. because we have a God, amen, that delivers. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. You need to come into this harvest. You've been all standing outside in this field worried about nothing's growing or anything. Well, we're here to harvest you in. Amen. We're here to pluck you out of there. Praise God. And when you come in the Lord's hands, he said he'll on no wise cast you out and no man shall pluck you out of his hands. Amen. You're in secure hands. He ain't got butter fingers like what I heard the other person say. You know, Butterfingers is, yeah, you might be in his hands, but whoop, you might slip out. No, -uh. God ain't got Butterfingers, praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's secure. When you're in his hands, he said you're engrafted in the palm of his hands. When you're engrafted in something, it's hard to break it off. Amen? Amen. It's in, when you're engrafted in a tree, praise God, that, that tree, you grow into it and you become part of it. Well, he said we're engrafted in Isaiah in the palm of his hands and our walls or our remembrance or our, our continually on his mind are continually about him. Amen. So he said he sent us in to where we didn't plant because right now the word's been going out. Amen. It's come through cable where people thought they couldn't reach. They're being reached now. A lot of people have cell phones all over the world. They don't have to wait on countries for a minister to come into that country. They can get it right off the phone. They don't even know. They can hear the gospel right there. Right now, even in Israel, they talk about it all, it, all the people will hear. There, there's so many in Israel where you can't preach the gospel outside, literally, they're getting preached to at their home online. They're not stopping that. Yeah. Amen. There are a lot of people hearing the gospel. Yeah. They're hearing it. They, they might be one of those Nicodemus guys. They coming in by night. They're going in that room, checking to turn on the internet. Let me see what this person's talking about. I'm not keep hearing about Jesus. Let me see what's going on here. And they start reading. Now they're coming in, hearing the faith. Amen. Because they know some things, amen, even the Muslim country, they're getting the gospel. They're like, man, there's people terrorizing. Jesus ain't come to terrorize. He come to take the terror out, amen? amen. His, right. his perfect love casts out that terror, that torment, praise God. Amen. And he said, terror shall be far from you, yeah. amen? They told that in Isaiah. He said, you shall be far from oppression and terror shall not even come near your dwelling because you're established in righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. I want you to see something because the Lord, 
has made up parts of the body. Amen? And I'm not just talking from a just all spiritual aspect. It's both. Because he's given us feet. Amen? Amen? Pull up this, Isaiah 52. Trying to see even what I wrote. I just like scribbled right there. I'm reading it like I don't even know what I just wrote, but I, I know where it's at. It's Isaiah 52. Uh, what I did even write there. I don't know what those last numbers are. But he says here in Isaiah 52, it says verse 7. Is that, that ain't even that 7. I don't know what that is. He said, How beautiful upon the mountains are what? The feet. See, God's given us feet. Feet do a lot of work. Amen? It, 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 of them that what? Bringeth good tidings. He said he shod in Ephesians 6 our feet with peace. The what? The preparation of the gospel of peace. We're not walking in to bring war. We're coming in with our feet to bring peace. That peace brings reconciliation. Amen? That's what reconciling is. It's bringing peace. The world's trying to bring peace. That ain't gonna happen. I'm saying they're, they're trying to collaborate peace, but people, you know, they got their differences. And if they don't know the Lord, you know, there's pride, there's other things. People think they're right, others wrong. So, you know, they can try to bring a peace, but uh, it's different. God, when he comes in your heart, he makes peace. He brings shalom into your heart. Amen? Praise God. I remember the one minister was telling us, we were at a meeting the other day, he said his uh, mother-in-law was dying, right? And uh, they had, they were caregiving for her, and she was Jewish. And uh yeah, he just told us we had a breakfast a couple of days ago in the morning with a meeting. And then um, he said uh, that she was Jewish, but they always were sharing the Lord. And she would say shalom. Like when it's Friday, we go Shabbat shalom, you know, where it's Shabbos or Sabbath day. And then uh, she would always say shalom. Shalom means wholeness. It means the be prosperous. It means to be at peace. It means like they always say nothing missing because you're at peace. If something's missing, you're unrest yeah. and nothing broken. If it's not, if it's broken, you're, all, you're you could be broken hearted, broken, whatever. You're, you're whole. Amen. So shalom is a lot in that word. So there will be shalom. And they told her before she was to leave, do you want to have, they, she was inquiring about that shalom, that peace. And then he said, would you like to experience shalom in your heart? Because it's through Jesus. And she said she would. And she accepted Jesus in her heart. And she felt the shalom. She sensed it. Her heart became at peace. And then she said afterwards, she was ready to go. You know, that she wanted to meet the Lord. Amen. And she said it, but she had the peace of God right. to go. You know, that, that's the way to go, I'm saying. And you don't have to wait till you're about to go because some people, they don't got time to be asking. You better do it sooner than waiting for later, amen, to be on that edge of fence because you don't know. You know, your time could be before you can even say anything, amen. amen. It's just, praise God, they had people praying for that, that her, you know, and she was able to receive, amen, and I got a lot of stories about some of those that were supposed to go, and God actually did that, but God's given us feet, and I'll tell you, feet are made for a lot of things, and God wants to use our feet in these areas, amen, I mean, if you're talking about sports, that's a platform there, for what? Running. Amen? You you can, you God gave you feet. So if you run, it's also running that you can be a platform to be able to share the gospel. Amen? I mean, you using that as a 
a tool where you be a, a that as far as a performer, you know, you're, you're running, or in other words, it could be soccer. People play soccer. Uh oh, I think I saw someone. Soccer. <laughs> no, but that's a platform. But no one, it opens the door for you to be able to share the gospel. You know, there's many soccer players around the world. They what? Want to do that? But is but then you know that's maybe a wide thing. How about dancing? Amen. People dance. You can dance for the Lord. Look at this. Go to Psalms thirty, verse eleven. Watch what it says here. It says Psalms thirty, verse eleven. Thou has what turned. For me, my morning <clears throat> in the dancing. Go to verse 10. Look at what it says first. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. And what does he say? For you have turned my morning into dancing. You can dance unto the Lord. There's not a problem with that. There's people in churches that dance, but you can do dancing anyways. There's people that do ballerina dancing. Doesn't mean that your feet can be used for God in that. Amen? There's a lot of places people don't think about. They just think, well, everything is like this, but God wants to use our feet in natural things to bring about the supernatural when we get in those things. Amen? And he'll put the glory on it. He'll take the ordinary and put some extra on it. You know, when you got a piece of chicken, you want some extra on there. What's that? Some barbecue, some hot sauce. You know, you just don't want plain. Or you want extra with it. Amen? Some vegetables. Some people want dessert. But you can have, you know, baked potatoes or whatever, fries and all that. You get extra. Well, God wants to take your ordinary and make it extraordinary, amen, with your feet, amen? So you will have a platform to be able to share with maybe your, the ones you're dancing with. Look at this. Go to 1 Samuel 18.6. Dancing's all through the Bible, amen? I don't got a perfect problem with people dancing in the church, Amen. As long as you're not doing no crazy dance, then I have to rebuke you, pull you aside or something. But, because we ain't talking about that dancing on these TVs and these MTV, BET, and all this. We talking about the G-O-D. We ain't talking about all that. So it came here, what? It came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women, see, it's all right. Nothing's wrong, you know, with women dancing. As long as they ain't up on no uh, thing going up there. Nah, -uh. <laughs> we talking about what's it called? Dancing. Now, if you got a spouse, okay, you keep that behind the door. But I'm talking about <laughs> dancing to the Lord. Amen. We talking about dancing to the Lord and dancing in church. Amen. You can dance and sing and dance. To the Lord, to, to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy. See, they had instruments and they did it with joy. That's a victorious dance. With instruments, oh, with, this, with instruments of music. Take a pause for a minute. But she's, amen, praise God. With instruments of music. See how they spelled that right there? <coughs> See, if you're sick, you play some music. Yeah. Amen. See how they play that right there? Music. Amen. You put that M-U before the sick, and you got music. Amen. That brings healing, praise yeah. God, Amen. to you. But it, they came with dancing. Amen. Your feet can stroll and dance through the church, praise God, dance at home. I, I love dancing for the Lord. You all don't see it. I, I can dance now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not joking. Maybe one day I'll just break out in the spirit and you'll see me. But 
what's called, usually I do it at home. I haven't yet uh, danced the way I really did. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know why it's so funny. <laughs> she knows I've been dancing. <laughs> Oh man, praise the Lord. <laughs> now I used to, I used to, I, I, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. The Lord sees it, amen. David was in, uh, David was with the sheepfold, no one was seeing him, amen. Amen, I, I do mine to the Lord. Day. You might see it here on earth. If not, you'll see me in heaven. Dance. I used to dance. I, I, I used to dance now. I'm saying because I wasn't ashamed. I'll do it in front of people. I'll do it in the malls. I used to break dance, all that. I can dance now. I'm not just trying to lift up, but I, I've stopped it. But I'll do it in my own time when I do it. But one day, amen. Hey, because I used to see it. No, the church we were at, the pastor, I know he'd be doing, they used to do the. Mine, yeah, but he'd be doing like the robot and all that, mm -hmm. and they'll be uh, right there in church doing it. No, I didn't have a problem. It was anointing on it too. I'm not gonna lie, it's there. I, you can have the anointing of God on what you do for dancing. But what are other ways? What do you do with your feet? Amen. There's a lot of things people can use their feet in workplaces or doing things athletic or whatever mm -hmm. that gives glory to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. People are drivers. Well, you need your hands for that, too, if you just drive with your feet. I'm just saying, you got to know how, because clutches and all that, but driving can be for the glory of God. Amen? Amen? I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. We don't have to narrow it down. It's a broad thing for what you can do with your feet. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Look at this. We'll look at a... a Actually, we'll see the dancing too. You remember in the book of Judges, the Japheth, Jephthah <coughs> came back and he made a vow. And then his daughter came dancing there to him. And he swore unto the Lord, whoever comes in the, the door, hey, I'm going to give him to you. And then the daughter came dancing up in there after he, he uh, no, I know the scripture in Judges, it's 20, uh, 26 or 34. Man, where's my writing? Yeah, that's 11. My writing, that was early this morning. Man, I was say 1134. But he came to Mitzvah. That's a good name, Mitzvah. That means like a blessing, like a Mitzvah. Right? And unto the house. And behold, his daughters came out to meet him with timbrels and dancing. See, man, dancing is all throughout the Bible. You look at the prodigal son, they heard the music and the dancing. Amen? So people get religious about stuff. Man, that's a celebration. When you dance, it's celebrating. In the Hebrew, in the Jewish, like I was talking to some people the other day, they're going to bat mitzvah. And I, they didn't know nothing about it, so I'm telling them I had a bar mitzvah, so I was letting them know down here, they, some of them spent some big money, but I was like, what's called? The, the, the other daughter was happy about because they were giving jogging clothes out away and all this. They were like, don't even break. We got gifts for everyone. But uh, what's it called? They were doing it, but they dance in there. Man, they got dances up in there. When I used to do weddings, what do they do? They dance. Man, I do those Chaldean weddings, boy. I like that kind of dancing. I know I... They'll, they'll be like, uh, yeah, now nah, we'll go, hey, I don't got a problem. They'll be holding the pinkies, and they have the one guy, yeah, I'm not going to do it in there. But if we'll, if we had a couple of guys, we'll all get up there and do it. They'll do this, this zipsy, amen, they'll come in there. That's how they come in, they open the door, and they come celebrating, they got the stick, and they're walking in. And they got it, and they're ready to party, and then they get in a big circle, and everyone starts, and they go around the whole, the whole reception hall. There's about, because there's usually 500 people there, and they'll be all dancing. <laughs> a couple guys take the lead. It ain't just women, 
The women were dancing there, but these men, boy, that's why break dancing started, because I saw how they dance. I was like, oh yeah, I know where this came from. It came from, <laughs> but uh, what's it called? But dancing's a good thing, amen? And how about this? God wants to use not just our feet, how about our hands? Amen? We'll look at 1 Timothy 2.8. Now, we know there's a lot of things for our hands in the Bible that he tells us. He said, I will, there it is, being willing, what? Therefore, that men pray everywhere, doing what? Lifting up holy hands. Amen? You ain't lifting up your hands just when you are arrested by the police. They tell you, lift up your hands now. That means you surrender. That when you lift them up to the Lord, you're surrendering to him. Amen. <clears throat> See, you don't want to be on the other side where you lift up hands. It's for the wrong thing. Now you can do it for the right thing for God. And he said, without what? Wrath. Like you fighting people. That's what, when they get really arrested. Not by the spirit. They get arrested in the natural. Because they come in with wrath, ready to fight people and stuff. And it says doubting, but we going up there surrendering to God, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Our reasonable service. So we give our hands up to the Lord. Amen? Amen? He said what? It says in the book of Psalms how, who is he to ascend into the holy hill? Amen? It talks about him that has, or dwell in his, it, it says that in Psalms, what was that? Psalms uh, 30, hold on. Yeah. Psalms 20, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just reading that actually uh, today. Look at this. It says here in the book of Psalms, right here, 15. It says, Lord, who shall abide in your tabernacle? Or who shall dwell in your holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, he that worketh true righteousness and speaketh what? Truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a cr criticize against his neighbor. And who isles, what? This is about the whoa, this is even in the right one. Hold up a minute. Yeah, I was it was close to it, but that wasn't it. It says right here, that's where you gotta look. It says right here in Psalms 24. I thought it was that's I was gonna say 23, it's 24. It's almost close to it. It says the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof, they that dwell therein. Isn't this in verse 3? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Says verse 24, he that has clean hands yes, and a pure heart. Amen. Amen. Your hands, it says, your hands, God wants to use. Amen. And hands are for laying hands. In Mark 16, we know that. Talks about laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. In verse 18, but we're, we're talking about how else to use our hands? Amen? There's a lot of ways to use our hands that God can anoint our hands for his work. Praise God. It, it, it's also, you know, when we're talking about, it's not just laying hands on the sick. That's one of them, praise God. It's also, there's a lot, we'll talk about that when we do the Bible study, but there's laying hands for blessings and everything. But what about in the natural that God wants to use our hands? Who, what was Jesus? He was a carpenter, amen? That means you work with your hands, praise God. My friend's a carpenter. He builds houses, praise God, over in Palm Royal. He can build cabinets. He does ceilings. He's like professional carpenter. I'm not talking about little light stuff. He's doing stuff that, you know, they're going in those homes that are like, phew. I'm like, bro, make some time, build your own, 
do your stuff in your house. He, he started, he built a deck and built uh, out in there. But what about, uh, what's it called? Brother right here, he does AC, working on hands, what? Air, ACs and cars and stuff. God anoints people's hands gifted to do things, amen, with it. Media can do camera, video. God anoints gifts people with their hands. When we look in the book of Exodus, we see Bezali, you know, and what did he do? God gave him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to work with stones, to work with gold, amen, to be able to make the precious things for the tabernacle. That's a gift, and it brings glory to God. Now, not going around stealing from people now, like a Judas, you know, taking money, doing things. It said in Ephesians, what, 5, it says, let him that stole steal no more, amen? Then you're going to be lifting up hands to the police. You ain't going to be lifting up hands to the Lord. You'll be lifting up hands to the Lord, too. Be like, Lord, I surrender, forgive me. But what's it called? He wants to use the hands because he said, let him that stole steal no more, but let him labor that he may give to him that needs, amen? So God wants to use hands. What is it good, too, for? Praise God. It also for cooking. People don't think uh, you're supposed to cook. Go here to 1 Samuel <clears throat> chapter 9, verse 23. God uses people. Amen. Samuel said unto who? The cook. Amen. We don't know who that cook is, but he, he's in there. He said a cook, a chef. Amen. Chef, prepare food. You can even look at David. What were they preparing for at the king's table? You know, it takes someone gifted to be able to prepare good food. Amen? Amen? That's a, that's a gift. And to bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto you, set it by thee. And what did he say? Verse 24. And the cook took up, up the, sh the shoulder and that which was upon it and said before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, set it before you, and eat. For unto this time has it been kept for thee, since I said, I invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. Well, it took someone to make that food. Amen? And God can use that for his glory. Look at who he used. A maid. What did she do? Clean the house. You remember Naaman the Syrian? She might have been clean in the house. They don't even mention her name. But know what? She's the one that led that man to the prophet. And he got healed. Came to know the Lord. He, he, was, he was pretty proud. And was even part of Israel. But that Jewish lady was. Said she was a maid. I know she's in heaven telling that testimony. Yeah, I told about uh, I was cleaning his house one day. And he had leprosy and everything. And, I, and he ain't even supposed to be around lepers. But she didn't have a problem because someone needs to be around someone. Mm -hmm. They were outcasts. We were praying the other day, yesterday, for who? The caregivers. <clears throat> Man, that's a blessing work. Mm -hmm. Those are people that take care of people's families, mm -hmm. their parents, that they can't take care of themselves no more. We pray for them. Amen? Mm -hmm. But they use in their hands. And those hands are healing hands, amen, to be able to labor. Don't think your work's not being seen or it's in vain with God. Doesn't matter where you put your hands, but you do whatever you do unto the Lord, amen? God sees it. God sees the service you do, amen? Me, I measured. I used to do floors, amen? I liked it. I was saying that floor was like a piece of art. And then I stain it beyond my hands and knees. I still do it today, clean the house. But I'm I be on my hands and knees, staining in the floor, water popping at first, staining it, and then I'll be putting that polyurethane or that water on it. But I'll be drunk sanding it, edging it for eight hours straight, just bent over, edging closets all wrong, all the walls and stuff. They didn't have a problem, it? but after you finish, then you see the work of your hands. Yeah. Amen? And then it'll be like, praise God, people be happy. You're doing a service for another person. Then it opens the door, because I'd be in houses doing that, 
and they'll be telling us we'll talk to the people. So the brother was there, but when I used to, I used to share the word with them. I'll just start preaching to them because the door will be opening. They'll be telling little things, and when that door is open, boy, I just kick that thing in. I'll say, "Here, let me pray for you. I know something. We'll go back for it." But they enjoyed it come in the house, you know, just will look for the door of opportunity to be open and then be able to share the gospel. You don't know who that one person may be. And they had, there's people that had money, some people didn't, didn't matter, praise God, but they need to hear the word and they need to, some prayer, amen? They don't know who, when they open the door, they allow you to come in. They just don't know who's coming with you That's right. when you come in, amen? Because when they say, yeah, come on in, it says whatever house you go unto and the peace be there, that could be even working. Mm -hmm. And then the peace remains, you could go in there and be able to share the word with them. Amen. I don't have a problem going people to home. I love that. That was a good one right there. But what about hands? What about, praise God, <clears throat> we talk about cooking. What about also, praise God, drawing? Amen. Got people that, Oh, there she is. She might be a draw art, a drawing or painting. Mm -hmm. Amen. We had someone. She was painting. Never knew. Would never paint. Now she's painting beautiful stuff. You don't know. God uses all those things for His glory. Amen. And He wants to use your hands, mm -hmm. not just always for the laying on and the hands on the sick. That's part of it. Amen. But He He wants you to use the hands he gave to do things with. Amen? Amen? You don't know what it is, praise God. What, you, what God can use your hands for until you use it, but you always think that this is for the glory of God. Like he'll put that extra on the ordinary and make it extraordinary for his goodness and to testify of the things of God. Amen? Yeah, it could be sowing, praise God. It drawing, when you say architect or building, what about building? Look at Noah. God gave him the blueprint, just like he gave Moses. He gave King David, too, for the tabernacle. But look, Noah built the ark. He built that Noah's ark, that boat. Man, that took a year by himself. I mean, with probably three boys, but no one else was there. Wow, they were just spectating. The whole world, and he was building. But when you look at King Solomon, what about for the people he used? And they mentioned they're in the Bible. God mentioned them. There's a the stone guys who would do the stones, and it was who he Huram, H U R A M, or he he was with. King David and he helped Solomon and he was the one to bring all the rocks, the stones for the temple, bring all the trees, the people cut them down. They had to bring all that, all those things. God wouldn't mention it if it wasn't where he didn't think about it, amen? The work of they do doesn't go unnoticed, praise God. Look at this, go to Nehemiah. Look at this here, chapter four. God, God doesn't put things in the Bible just for the fun. Chapter 3, look at this. I want you to see something. It's not by accident. God sees everything. Your name is written in the book. of Your name is written in the book of life. Amen? If what you think you're doing isn't us doing service, it is. Amen? You just find the field you're supposed to be in. Amen? You're not just because you're not in a, has to be a pulpit or some big person, whatever. It doesn't mean anything. God takes, he pays each person the same wage. Amen. He gave everyone a penny a day for their work. And he, did they agree? Some worked harder and some did work shorter. And the people who worked harder were mad at the ones because it was towards the end of the day. But he said, didn't you agree with me? that we both get what we did for the same wages. God equally rewards people. It doesn't matter if they had a huge position on earth. If God doesn't take the small work unnoticed. Amen? Look at this in, uh, here. It says for chapter 3, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can read it yourself. It said, And Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brother and the priest, and they builded the sheep gate. 
Look at that, the priest. The priest would also cook. They offered up sacrifices, but they'll be cooking too. Amen? They knew how to cook. They had to do it well done. There was a way of preparing it. That's the way I like my food, well done. They had to prepare it, you know, put that thing on fire and don't, don't let it sod and be all nasty, but with milk and stuff, none of that had to be separated. It had to be separated, but they had to cook it right. But look at this. They put the doors and even unto the tower of Mia, they sanctified it. See, your work can sanctify what you're doing. It's set apart. Unto the tower of Haniel, the next unto him, builded the men of Jericho. Look how everyone's named. And next to them builded Zechor, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hanai build, who also laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. Let's keep going. Watch this. I want you to see something. Huh. Oh, hallelujah. It says, let's drop down to verse 7. And next on them repaired Melatia the Gibeonite, and Jaden the Marathite, and the men of Gibeon, and Mitz and Amitba, unto the throne of the governor on the side of the river. Next on them repaired Uziel, the son of Harhari, I don't know, of the goldsmith. And next on them repaired Haniah, the son of the Apocrathes. See, he was a Apocrathy, he was a, a perfumer, but he was helping build. Mm -hmm. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the walls, praise God. Now I want you to see something, because all these people were building. And it, it, it was funny, because there was some, I want you to see something, there was some that I guess they felt uh, they didn't uh, really need to do anything. Look at this. Go to verse 5. Go back up to 5. And next unto them, the Tekalites repaired. But their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. See that there? He didn't, he didn't leave that out. God saw that too. That those people didn't want to work. You see that? It says the Tekoites repaired, but the other ones even feel they had to work. Who's the nobles? Those high lifted up ones? They were like, we don't need to let the, let the other people work. We'll just sit here and watch. They want to be spectators. Why everyone was participators. They were all helping. Whether they did other jobs, they were still helping doing the work to build the thing. Well, go here to, and we'll close and then I'll finish it up next week. Look at in chapter 4, verse 6. Because we're not done. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together, just like a body working together. Unto the half thereof, for what? The people had what? A mind to work. Amen? My friend used to, brother used to always tell me that when I was at the job. People got to, let's have a mind to work here. Not a mouth, a mind. You know, where everyone puts their mind to work to do something. Amen? Praise God. So the people had a mind to work to do something. Amen. And they all did it together. But the ones who didn't want to do it was the nobles. They felt, I guess, they were better than others or something. I don't understand that they don't think they have to work. But those had to labor and they helped to build this all together. Amen. Praise God. I want to pray. Amen. And we'll pray again. But I'm going to pray for those on the line and those who are here. I want you to know your work is not without importance. Amen? Every work God looks at, it's not without importance. Praise God. And we'll see some other parts next week. But I just want you to know, don't think, oh, well, what I'm doing is not a service. Everything you're doing is a service if it's helping someone else that's in need. A police officer 
his service. A fireman's at service. To do something in someone's house is a service to them. Amen? Because you're doing something they can't do for themselves or do on their own. Amen? So it's helping people. And you can bring glory to God if we use it for him. Amen? So everyone lift up your hands. I just want to pray over you. Father, I thank you for each and every person. Lord, that's doing a service, whether their feet or their hand, at least today, Father God. I ask you to anoint them, Lord, that their hands, hallelujah, even put makeup on, painting whatever, in their feet, wherever they're walking or doing, Father God, to help even others with their feet. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, even repairing and doing all those things. I thank you for gifting their hands. I thank you today, anointing their hands and putting that extra on their hands, Father God, on their feet today in the name of Jesus. That you're not unjust or unrighteous to forget their labor and their work that they have showed in that they are serving to the people, Father God. As you said, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all, especially the household of faith, Father God. I thank you that their work is important and their work is seen and not forgotten. And I thank you for them, Father God, and thank you that you recognize and you see it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. I wanna leave the opportunity if you don't know the Lord, man, it's the best opportunity to come. God, you might be like, ah, oh, I got to go to work. Well, know what? If you know who you're working for and who you're working to, it changes a whole lot. Because God will give you the joy of your heart. Amen. For work and to the Lord. If that's you, I want to pray for you and pray with you. Then all you got to do is ask the carpenter, which is the king of kings. He did work with his hands. He was a carpenter. He knows work, amen? He didn't not do anything. He was a carpenter before he became a king, amen? But he showed us, he, he, he was like us, amen? He wasn't like someone that couldn't do anything, but he wants to come into your life and change you. All you gotta do is say, Lord Jesus, here I am, come into my life, use me, Lord. Here I am, send me. I ask you to come into my life and change me, make me, and repair me and rebuild me. I thank you, Lord, for coming in their life, restoring them, refreshing them, renewing them, and reviving them, Father God, in G and saving them because you loved on them in Jesus' name. I thank you for them and blessing them and watching over them in Jesus' precious name, hallelujah. I just wanna know, hallelujah, if you have prayed that prayer, you can put it online, amen. Give a thumbs up. We love you, God loves you, Jesus is Lord over your life. If someone, I just wanna ask, if someone was having that pain in their left side, if it was here, just raise your hand on the left side under by your rib. I want to just say a prayer again real quick. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I, I just pray again, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, over that pain, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. And I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be healed in the name of Jesus right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give you glory and praise and honor for it in Jesus' holy name. Well, we love you. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you back this week. God bless you. And you all have a blessed day. Amen. God bless.